This is Gwen. She's Gwen. got my same hairdo. Hey, Gwenny. She's an Arctic box, and I'm going to show you how to use her fur. <laughs> Okay, so I see these lake trout flies that Lance has been fishing lately, um, and I just wanted to play with some of this synthetic yak. <laughs> Dude, bleep that out. I've been drinking Dr. Pepper a lot. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of the, the synthetic yak pattern that, that I've been messing around with. This one's tied on a big blue water saltwater hook that would be good for like fishing for some of the bigger species in saltwater for trout you can do it on tube tube flies and you can do this fly in all different lengths this one's about 10 inches in length um, and it's got a really good uh, taper to it and it's got a good profile at the head and I'll show you how we build that up so there's an, an olive-ish one and then we did or I did a purplish one that's that's kind of cool. So you can do all different types of eyes on them as well. We're going to use this fake jungle cock that's kind of a cool material. Um, but yeah, we'll just jump right into it and get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is just dress the hook with some 140 denier thread. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about using Kevlar or GSP with these big predator flies. And it's really just not necessary. If you use enough thread wraps with just plain old 140, you'll be good to go. So we're going to build a core out of this with Polar Flash. You can use all different types of Polar Flash or all different colors. Um, if you're doing a, say a rainbow trout color, you could use pink Polar Flash. Um, but if you want a different core color, you could use different colors. I just like this, uh, I think this is a Mirage color. Now the key to tapering these, these fibers and I got to give a shout out to Gunnar Brammer. He he ties some of the best streamers and bait fish patterns that I've seen. And I watch his videos. I, I I've learned a lot of how to make good tapers from him. So shout out Mr. Gunner. Um, but basically, what I'm going to do is is I'm going to pull these fibers out and build this taper into this and kind of roll it in my fingers a little bit, just to kind of break up the hard edge. So. As you can see, it's tapered way more than it than it was when I just cut it right off the hank. And on this fly, I'm going to make it so that it's, I don't know, roughly the length of my vise. That's about, it's going to turn into an eight and a half inch pattern or so. And I'll just tie those in just like that. So I've got those fibers coming off. Now these are really soft fibers and they have the tendency to want to kind of wrap around the, uh, the hook. So I'm going to cure that with some resin. All right, from here, to keep this from fouling around the hook, just right off the bat, I'm just going to take some clear resin, uh, what, whatever your favorite resin is, and we're just going to stiffen up that tail a little bit. Just let it soak in nicely. We put it up into the thread and make sure it's straight when you cure it or you'll have a fly that swims weird. So there we go. We've got an anti-foul device. Now we're going to start working with the yak hair or the synthetic yak. So I'm going to take a clump of the white and less is more with this stuff. It's 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 really easy to put too much on these flies so the more sparse it is the the better it's going to cast so here i've got a full hank it's it's pretty long fibered material but before i trim this i'm going to do that same technique of tapering the fibers by pinching it and pulling the fibers out and rolling them in my fingers and there, there I go. That's that's about how I want it. It's going to be the same length as the flash, about right there. And for this first bunch, I'm just going to tie that in normally, like I normally would. And I will now. I'm going to attach this to the flash with some resin as well.
to let the resin soak in there and cure that up and it should stay all pointing in the same direction. Okay. Okay, so now the idea is I'm going to build three main clumps of, of yak hair to build the tapers, but there's a little bit of filler between those. So I'm just going to dub some uh, Mother of Pearl Ripple Ice Dub. Not Ripple Ice Fibers, Ripple Ice Dub. And create kind of a, a bump to use. And we're going to use the reverse tie method to get these to, to stand up nicely. So, okay, so now I'm gonna pull out the, the brown color that we're gonna use for our contrasting color. And I'll pull out just, you know, not, not a ton of these fibers, just about, you know, that much. I don't know, that's, uh, if I pinch it down, it's about the same width as the hook shank. Okay, so same story here. I'm gonna taper this this section of the brown. I've got that tapered. I want the brown now to be slightly shorter than the white that I've got already. So here I have it measured out. I'll pinch it and I'm gonna trim it. So now I've got this section uh, trimmed off and flush but I'm going to tie it in reverse style. So I'm going to, if I grab it with my other hand and, and pinch it between my thumbs like this and then grab it with my other hand, it's really easy to reverse um, and it will keep the, the same flush side that I just trimmed off. Um, so I'm, I'm going to tie this in and kind of butt it against that, that dubbing and uh, take my thumbnail now and rotate that around and what, what that will do is it will help move those fibers on either side of the hook. You can see it slipped a little bit so I'll add a little bit more tension onto it but if I use my thumbnail now the brown fibers cover both sides of the hook not just the top. So this clump that I used for the back or for this section of the fly if if I turn that over now this side should be started to be tapered and I'll, I'll just kind of taper that out just like that and I'm going to tie that in on the bottom so I'll measure that make sure that I'm roughly the same length trim that off and tie it in the same way I did the top using the reverse tie Rotate that around, distribute the fibers with my thumbnail. And now I'm ready to tie those back. So the, the brown ones, I'll kind of pull back and bring my thread on top of the, the fly. And now I'm going to take my other fingers and pull the white ones down and just get that started. And from here, I can take those fibers and split them and pull them on either side of the hook and now I should be able to start teasing those fibers back and really getting them to to sit how I want and now build up a little ramp of thread in front of that that little mini head here and it should taper nicely and have a little bit of, of shape to it so you can see how that is now you can see there's a big hole right here so if I take these fibers and pinch them on both sides and rotate them that will cover up some of those holes this is really sparse as it is right now but as we add more clumps you'll see that we fill those in okay so again another clump of dubbing okay now I'll take that uh, same clump of brown that I used for the, the last section and it's going to be a little shorter so it's going to be about to here so I'll taper that one and tie that one in. So 
So as you can see, I'm going a little bit shorter with each section of, of the yak. So I'll do the transfer technique with my thumbs, tie this in on top, do the same thing with some white. So you can see the nice shape of the minnow is starting to take place. Um, if I take a little comb and kind of brush those out, it, it poofs it out a little bit, but as soon as it hits water, it's going to taper down nicely. Now, the trick to this fly is to, to get the head to create more of a, a, a profile, a bait fish type profile, and they're always a little bit thicker at the head and they taper down to the tail. So. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to add a composite loop with some opossum. So this is opossum hair, and it's a little bit more translucent than, than some of the other fibers that I've played with. It's really cool stuff, and I'll just build a, a loop with some ripple ice fiber as well. Okay, at this point in this fly, I'm going to build a compound loop out of ripple ice fiber and shrimp pink, ripple ice fiber UV pearl, some opossum, and some predator wrap. The reason I like the opossum is, is it's actually a pretty translucent material once you get it off the pelt and it, it holds body well. I want to put this loop up on the front of this fly to, to kind of keep a little bit of shape uh, as I taper it back. Once it gets wet, this loop will help the, the head stay a little bit more bulky than the body and give it that nice minnow shape. So to start out, I'm just going to take some of this ripple ice fiber and I'm going to lay it maybe with more fibers going on this side of the yellow line here than on this side so maybe cheat so that it's longer on on the left side I'll put about that many fibers on it I'll do the same thing with the pearl this just adds an element of flash And now I'm going to take this opossum and I'm going to come in here with the, the D-loop tweezers and I'll grab about that much of it. So as you can see I've got it. I found with this if I turn it upside down and come in here with my, my scissors I can get a nice easy cut and there I have the opossum that I want to use for it. So for, for this, I'm going to lay that down so that the opossum butt ends just barely go over that yellow line. You can kind of adjust it as needed. And then uh, with this predator wrap, it comes on a, on a string or on a core, kind of like marabou. So I'm going to cut off, I don't know, two inches or so, and then come in here with my my tweezers and clamp up you know however long I want those to be maybe a little longer than half half the length is what I'm going to use and I'll trim those off so here I've got the the predator wrap and I'll just lay those fibers right on top of that opossum all right, so now we're, we're ready to roll. I'm going to take the loop and kind of pinch it down and slide the D-loop tweezer, tweezers under it. So I, I've grabbed all the materials here. And now if I turn the loop upside down, I can trim that kind of right along the edge of the opossum to make a kind of a, a point where I can put that into my dubbing loop. So once we have the loop built, I'm going to put a tiny little bit or a tiny little ball of uh, the ripple eye stub right here up against this last chunk. 
And I'm going to have to put a loop here and another section of, uh, of yak or synthetic yak. So it's a little tight quarters, but we can do it. So I'll build a loop out of thread, close off the back, and now we're ready to insert this, uh, the compound loop that we built. Uh, to twist it up, I use the, the gator grip tool with the shepherd's loop. And I'll just take this whole loop and put the, the tweezers up into the loop. Use this finger to kind of hold the, the loop or the thread in place while I, while, while I let go of the D-loop tweezers. Make sure to keep it loose all the, you know, and, and not, don't let go of it while you're still down here on, in the loop or you'll pull a bunch of fibers out. So uh, you can see that my finger has not let go, this finger right here. Um, and I'm going to keep that. Um, keeping tension on that loop until I can get some twists into it and it will start to twist up and it will mat up it'll look pretty nasty in just a second but that's fine alright so we've got a pretty gnarly loop going on right here so I can take a a needle like a Stanfo uh, bodkin and pick out a lot of those fibers that are binding down. Don't get too gnarly with it because they're really not bound in there very well yet until I put some more twists on it. I just kind of want to get them get them out of the way, get them picked out a little bit so that I don't uh, mat them all down when I twist more. Okay so I'm going to add some more twists into it and then pick it out again I can get a little bit more aggressive with my picking and now we have a pretty durable loop going on here the coolest thing is this uh, the shrimp pink is very fluorescent it has a lot of UV reflective qualities and for whatever reason fish like that who knows can they see it Curtis it's scientific fact scientific fact yep. well there you go nerds for the win. Okay, I'm going to preen this back a little bit. You can get it wet if you want to. I'm going to try to just do a dry run. So I'll pull those fibers back and I'll mat some down. That's fine. I'll come back through and, and pick those out with either a comb or a bodkin. Okay, so we're just going to close off that loop. Just a few turns of, of thread and get rid of the excess thread. And now we have a terrible looking fly. Alright, so I'll, I'll use my thread to, to kind of uh, bind some of those fibers down and push it back to give my spell, myself a little bit of space. And now if you take a little comb and brushed all that stuff out, it's going to free all those fibers. And now you can see the bulk that I'm talking about. So that's a pretty gnarly head on this. And if I left it as is, you know, it's still slimmed down in the water, but it just doesn't look very good right now. It's maybe a little bit too gnarly. Um, so the next part, I'm going to I'm going to add just one more section of yak on top of this, or yak synthetic yak, I should say. But I'm going to use a, a thicker chunk of yak than I've used for any of the other sections just because I want it to cover up this big old dubbing ball of goodness that we've done. So here I've got a, a pretty significant thick chunk of yak. And I'll taper that out just like I have with all the other stuff. This chunk of yak is maybe three times as big as the others that I've used. And it's going to sit about like that. Right, so we've trimmed off the excess. I'll transfer. Oh, okay, I totally screwed up that last clump. So as you can see, it's quite a bit thicker clump. 
and it's going to go about maybe three-fourths of the way down the fly and I'll just use that thumb technique again and attach that one right on top of the fly distribute it around as best I can and now I'll do some white for the bottom okay so the the white punt the, the white clump on the bottom is tied in the same exact way distribute that around and now when I when I pull that over I'm gonna kind of let it cover the whole top of the fly like that same with the bottom I can deal with the bottom later just kind of mash it into place um, I'll build up a, a little bit of a thread dam now to, to keep those fibers pushed back where they belong. And now with these fibers I'm going to you know manhandle them a little bit and move them to the sides of the fly so it covers up the whole the whole side and bottom of the fly. Now if we pull those back, we've got that nice minnowish looking profile. Okay. Now the big debate on big minnow flies like this is how do you make the eyes? Or what, what do you use for eyes? And I've used a little bit of, of everything. So um, you can do the eyes a bunch of different ways. I'm going to use these cool uh, synthetic jungle cock eyes. Um, talking to Lance, uh, we want a fly that just tracks straight when you're fishing for lake trout. So building up a big epoxy head is going to add too much weight to the front of this fly. So I'm just going to add on some, some of these. These are just like little uh, plastic tabs. Another option that I've done on some of these tube flies is just to add on a stick-on eye. It's not a 3D eye. So I just stick it on and then cake some loon soft head onto it and that's a super durable option as well. It remains flexible and those are, those are on there super, super well. So with these stick on eyes, you basically just take two of them. I'm taking the, the large size and I'll just take that and tie it in about, let's say right there. And it will stick to the fly, but I'm not really worried about it sticking because it's tied in at the front. Um, and who knows, if, if they get torn off by a fish, uh, you're fishing for, you know, a trophy. So if you get one fish on one of these flies and it tears off an eye, then so be it. So I've got the eyes tied on either side um, with the tabs kind of going forward. And then I'm going to fold those back and just make a wrap of thread with the, the, the plastic tab tied back and then just trim those off. Okay, so it's really not a, a super complicated fly. It's, it's uh, pretty simple, it just takes a lot of time to tie. So at this point, just throw whip finish in there, throw your favorite head cement on it, and uh, it's pretty much ready to fish.